Hey, what's up, guys? Airsoftman819 here again with another video. Uh, this will probably be the last Atari 2600-related video uh, before I actually do the console review because I'm currently working on the actual console review. I'm um, just going to have to be patient. Uh, console reviews are very difficult to film and take a lot of time. Um, but my Atari 2600 console review is coming up, and it will be done within the next few days. Um, but this will be the last video in that series until I make um, the review of the console. So, the Atari 2600 um, was released in 1977, and it was produced all the way up until early of 1992. So it had a very long lifespan. And um, that, combined with the fact that you really didn't have to have any special license or permission to make games for the Atari 2600, um, companies could really make whatever type of cartridges they wanted as long as they fit and worked inside of the console. So, um, the Atari has one of the most diverse library of games ever. And not only in the games themselves, but also in the cartridges. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the different variations of Atari 2600 uh, cartridges you'll run into. Um, now, there's obviously several that I do not have here because some are very rare and very difficult to find. But I have a reasonable selection of different games from different time periods, and um, I figured I would go ahead and make this video. So, um, being released in 1977, a lot of the early games looked like one of these two here. Um, some of the very early games were text which is this here. And these are uh, games made by Atari, by the way. We're not getting into the third party at the moment. We're going to be talking about those in a sec. But this is called a text label. And the majority of text labels uh, tended to be either pack-in games or early games. And uh, that's what this is. I believe this is a pack-in. I'm not entirely sure, but this is combat. Probably the most uh, common Atari cartridge you'll run into. And um, notice... Uh, you can tell an early game from a later game just by looking at the top here, well, where it goes into the console. M most of these early games have dust covers. And basically what this is is just a plastic cover that covers the contacts of the game until it's inserted into the console, and then this cover is pushed down. Um, obviously, it's not in the console right now, so I can't push the cover down, but a lot of the early Atari published games um, have these dust covers. So this is a copy of Combat which is obviously an early game. This is actually a launch title. And here's Video Olympics from 1978, and it also has the dust cover. Now, um, also a lot of the early games have picture labels like this. And um, that's what I'm saying when there's a lot of variation. So you have the text label and the picture label. Um, got a couple more examples. Here's Space Invaders, also from 78. It has a picture label, and it's from 78. And here's Night Driver from 1980, and this is a text label. So there's two major types of games um, that Atari published. The picture labels and the text labels. But that does not stop with Atari. Atari published all sorts of different labels on their games, but these are the two major ones that you'll probably see the most of. Text and picture. Um, these are all early games. They all have the dust covers, and um, that's the uh, early game from Atari. Now, later in the 2600's lifespan, a couple different types of games appeared, and that are these here. This is Silver Label and Red Label. Um, the Silver Label games and the Red Label games tend to be much later in the Atari's lifespan, um, and they negate the dust cover. There is no more dust cover. The contacts of the cartridge are exposed, and that was basically to cut costs. These cartridges are noticeably lighter, they feel a bit cheaper, and they tend to look better for the simple fact that they're newer. This is Mousetrap, made by Atari, and uh, published by Atari, um, and it was released in 1988. And this is Centipede, which is another later game, also released in 88. And um, the Silver and Red Label, um, they were both released around the... Um, around the same time. Uh, the Red Label games were more aimed at the Atari 2600 Junior. They were made during the lifespan of the 2600 Junior console, 
which basically was in the last attempt to sell the 2600 uh, in the late 80s, which it really didn't succeed all that well. Uh, so the red label cartridges, especially like this, are actually not all that common. Um, games like this and Pac-Man Jr. Um, just aren't that common because they were made later in the Atari's lifespan and they're not quite as common. So red label games are um, slightly desirable, especially in good condition, and this one is. Um, but these tend to not be as high quality, um, and they they don't fit into the older consoles very well. I have a couple of six Switch Ataris, and these later red label games just are really sticky to get into the console. Um, so yeah, and this is a silver label. There's quite a bit of games that um, were made like this. Um, silver labels tend to have no pattern really because I've seen silver label games as late as 1988, and some even earlier than that with games like. Battle Zone. Of course, this is kind of a different variation of the silver label, but it's still a silver label. Um, to my knowledge, they did not start doing the silver labels until 1982, and that's because in 1982, when the um, Vader console was released, um, that was the first time the Atari was ever called the 2600. So games that said Atari 2600 on them like this um, weren't released until 1982 along with the Vader console that actually said 2600 on it. So um, I don't think you'll find a silver, silver label game any earlier than 1982. Personally, I've never seen one. This one's from 83. Um, but this is kind of a mishmash because it's a silver label, but it has a dust cover. So you'll find weird variations like that. I don't know why exactly, but there's just a lot of variation um, in Atari cartridges. And um, even some of the later games released didn't have a silver or a red label. They just looked like this. This is Super Breakout. This one was made in 1988, um, and it doesn't have a dust cover, but it has a regular black label, uh, picture label. Um, so there's a huge variation in Atari games. You will find all sorts of stuff when it comes to the Atari published games. They were just all over the place. So that pretty well does it for the Atari games. Um, but that just gives you an idea of what to look for and how to know if a game is older or newer. Basically, the easiest way to tell is if it has a dust cover or not. Um, all the games that are negating the dust cover are the later games that were made to uh, reduce costs. Um, so the uh, dust cover games tend to be older. So, all right, now it's time to get into third-party stuff. So, um, I'll start with the biggest third-party company cartridges first, and I'll get to the smaller ones. I really don't have a lot of rare cartridges, so um, I'll start with probably the most popular um, third-party developer for the Atari, which was Activision. And there's really not a whole lot of deviance in their cartridges, just basically two major ones. Uh, there are the text and the picture. Um, obviously, there's a big difference here because one has just text and the other has picture. Um, why did my lighting just go yellow? This camera is not good. Okay, find out what's going on with my lighting here. Ah, uh, whatever, it'll go away on its own. But um, you have picture labels like this, and uh, Activision was a bit different than Atari. They didn't put artwork on their cartridges that wasn't true. Because, to be quite honest, you look at one of the Atari published picture labels and you see this tank and it's, it's really well drawn and it's blowing something up and it looks epic. And then you plug the cartridge into the into the system, and it ends up just being a few squares moving around. So Atari uh, really made promises on the front of their cartridges that they couldn't deliver. Um, that's that's seen pretty obvious in the um, artwork of the cartridges. So you can see this really well drawn tank blowing something up, and uh, let's see here in Missile Command, there's freaking rockets and a dude sitting there and it's just they really oversold their games with the artwork um, it's pretty awesome to look at nowadays but it might have been a bit deceiving back in the day but uh, see what Activision did was they actually took a screenshot of the game and put it on the front so when you looked at the front of an Activision cartridge you knew exactly what you were getting into so um, that's really cool about the Activision games I, I bought this at a Goodwill so it's got the price on the back but um, so yeah um, none of the Activision cartridges, to my knowledge, had um, dust covers. They just were open like this. Um, but there's just two major variations of, of um, Activision cartridges. I believe some of the later games by Activision looked a bit different than either of these. But these are the two variations you'll find the most. Um, I'm not sure how to tell these apart by year. I don't know if the text 
the text games were earlier and the picture games were later. Um, I'm not exactly sure on how to tell the difference. Yeah, because this is made in 81 and it has a picture and this was made in 82 and it doesn't have a picture. So um, Activision is kind of like Atari in that respect where there's just really no pattern to their cartridges. But this is Chopper Command. Um, this is Laser Blast. And these are the two major variations from Activision that you'll see. And um, also with Activision games, these little spring-loaded tabs in here, which were, well, some of them are spring-loaded, some of them are not. That's what I'm getting to. These little tabs in here were meant to open the dust flap on the console cartridge port. And on some of these games, they're solid, like on Chopper Command. I can't move it. I'm trying to get a good, it's hard to see, but it's this little plastic tab right here. And you can see it when I push on it, it's solid. And um, on Laser Blast here, it's spring-loaded. I can push. So I don't know why that's different, but that's just how it is. Also, Activision games have this little tab here and this little indent. So you can actually, when you stack the games, they lock. So they won't move around, which is a pretty neat feature. So you can stack multiple Activision games in the lock. This is Mega Mania which is a picture label. So that's Activision. That's a very common cartridge that you'll run across in the wild. Um, and here's, okay, I really don't know how to pronounce this developer because people pronounce it differently. Some people pronounce it Imagic. Some people pronounce it iMagic. I'm just going to say Imagic because it sounds better to me. Um, and here's the two major variations you'll see with um, Imagic cartridges. Um, they have text and picture. Um, it seems like a lot of companies did this. Some of them, some of the cartridges were text, some of them were picture. Um, I'm not sure why they did this. And once again, I believe these were both made the same year. They were both made the same year. This has a picture, this doesn't. Um, I don't, I don't know what dictates whether or not they have a picture. They just, some of them do, some of them don't. This is firefighter, this is demon attack. And these are very unique because they have this weird little shelf here. I guess it's a gripping surface to pull the cartridge out of the console. But it says Imagic right here. Um, these cartridges are pretty well made. They have um, interesting silver, shiny, chrome labels. And I like these cartridges. They're pretty cool. No dust cover. Um, the only developer that made cartridges with a dust cover other than Atari was SpectraVision. And I do not have any SpectraVision cartridges because they're kind of rare. But if I get a SpectraVision cartridge, I might make a video on it. Um, but uh, this is the Imagic cartridges. And these tend to be very common. These are easy to find. So, those out of the way. Another very common cartridge you'll run into is the M Network. And these are very infamous cartridges because some of the worst of the worst Atari games tended to come on these because they were very cheaply made. Um, it really didn't cost a lot of money to get your game put on one of these and sold. Um, and these cartridges are noticeably lower quality than any of the other Atari cartridges. So they're very light. They weigh about half. They feel like they're completely hollow. Um, very cheap feeling. They're just kind of snapped together right here. Um, no dust cover. No spring-loaded tabs. No artwork. Just a label on the end telling you the name of the game. So when you look at it, you don't even know what you're getting into. You just see a name... And when you plug in the um, cartridge into the console, you're just kind of random of what's going to happen. You know, you don't know what the game's going to be like. But um, I'm not saying that all these are bad because there are some decent games on these cartridges. But the majority of them were mediocre at best. And um, these are pretty undesirable. None of these are really worth a whole lot of money. There might be a couple that are slightly rare. But um, you'll run into many different developers that put their games on these. Um, M Network just published them, so different developers put games on these, so that's why you'll see a, a different, a big um, difference in quality between some games. Like some one game on one game might be great, the other one might be completely garbage, and that's because different developers were allowed to put their games on these, so you just really don't know what you're getting into. And uh, there's really no big variation in these. Some of them just look slightly different. Like this one says M Network on it, and this one doesn't. This one has like a little square piece on the back, and this one doesn't. Um, you'll just see like little tiny variations, but they all generally look like this. And um, this one's a bit faded, this one's not. And just, that's the main difference. So, we're rounding out towards the end here. I've only got a couple left. Um, another very common uh, cartridge to run into are the Coleco cartridges. Um, now, 
Coleco published the game, but there were many different developers. Well, not many. I think there was two or three different developers that um, put their games on these white Coleco cartridges. Um, individually, Nintendo and Sega, which is really weird that Coleco published games for Nintendo and Sega, which is really weird. And it's really weird to have Nintendo games and Sega games on an Atari console. Um, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around when you think about it. But um, most of the time, these did not have artwork. I'm not sure if they ever did. Most of them are just text like this. They have this goofy little text. This is Donkey Kong. This is a very common cartridge. You'll, you'll run into this a lot in the wild. And Coleco cartridges just stand out because they're a different color. They have these little ridges on the side. They have this little shelf in here that says Coleco uh, made in the USA. But that's how these stand out because they're this, this white kind of grayish color. They've also got spring-loaded tabs. And uh, these cartridges tend to be really high quality, and I never have any problems with them. And uh, generally, the games are uh, high quality as well, so um, this is definitely a cartridge to look for. These cartridges are um, normally very good quality games, and they're definitely worth collecting. So that's Coleco. And the last game we'll be looking at is one that's common, but a little bit less common than the others. And this is an Apollo cartridge. Um... Apollo games are not extraordinarily rare. There were a couple titles done by Apollo that were rare, but um, this individual one is slightly rare. It's not incredibly rare, but um, it's rare enough, I guess. Um, I, lucked, I lucked out getting this game in a game store for like five bucks or something. But this is... Sorry about that, guys. My SD card ran out of space, and I had to delete a couple things to continue the video, and I figured I would change the camera angle a little bit. Um, so as I was saying, these Apollo games, they're not quite as uh, common as the other cartridges I've talked about in this video. Um, some titles by Apollo are quite collectible. This individual game is Space Cavern. This is one of the more common titles you'll find by Apollo. But these cartridges really don't stand out a whole lot. Um, one of the big reasons they stand out is because they're slightly smaller um, than most of the other cartridges made for the Atari. Um, but other than that, the aesthetics of them... Um, aren't really all that exciting. Um, it's got these little ridges here, and it says Games by Apollo on the back. Um, kind of mimicking the Activision ridges a little bit. Um, no dust cover or anything, no spring-loaded tabs. Um, but these cartridges tend to be pretty high quality, and the labels um, hold up fairly well. I'll do a quick size comparison between a couple other cartridges so you can get an idea of how small it is. It, they're not tiny by any stretch, but they're just a tiny bit smaller than all of the other cartridges I've talked about. So Coleco a little bit bigger. Um, Imagic is much bigger, as you can see. Um, Activision. Yeah, see, they almost, they completely ripped off Activision's ridges. But uh, the Activision games are a little bit bigger. And uh, even the Atari made games are slightly bigger. So um, these, these cartridges have a smaller feel overall. Um, but they're pretty high quality cartridges, and if you run into them in the wild, I would definitely pick them up because these are a little bit more collectible. So, um, another cartridge you'll commonly run into, uh, probably more common than the Apollo, are these, uh, cartridges by US Games. Um, these aren't extremely common, but they're more common than the, um, Apollo cartridges. Um, once again, these don't stand out a whole lot. They have a couple, uh, unique features about the cartridge. Um, they tend to be a slightly bigger um, than the Atari made cartridges, as you can see, a little bit bigger, oh so slightly. Um, and they have these rectangular cutouts on the back. I really don't know what that that's about, but um, it's just there. Um, they have the uh, cutouts on the back, um, solid tabs, no spring loaded, no dust cover. Um, this individual game is Space Jockey. They're doing kind of a uh, Activision thing where they're actually printing a screenshot of the game onto the cartridge, which is pretty cool. Um, and they kind of have the wraparound one-piece label, which I kind of like. And overall, these cartridges tend to be pretty high quality. Uh, the games on the cartridges tend to be pretty good. So, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend picking these up as well as if you run into them um, in the wild. So, uh, one thing I have neglect neglected to talk about is the fact that some cartridges... Um, do not fit into certain Ataris very well. Um, it kind of varies between systems, but the most common issue is with six Switch consoles. Um, I'll elaborate more on that during my console review. But with the six Switch Atari consoles, the earlier ones, the cartridge has to go a much farther distance to actually get to the cartridge connector, which poses 
uh, more issues for certain cartridges. Um, the biggest offenders of this are actually not cartridges made by third party companies, but actually cartridges made by Atari. Um, the later cartridges, I should add. Like the later um, red and silver label games, the ones that have no dust cover. Um, these cartridges were made to a slightly different spec, spec, I should say, not spec, um, slightly different specifications to the older ones, um, the older dust cover cartridges like this. Um, these tend to fit in all consoles really well, but these types of games individually sometimes are a really tight fit in uh, six switch consoles. The biggest offender of which um, is the light sixer. Um, I've owned a couple light sixers and I've had the same issue with both. These cartridges are a very tight fit. Uh, they will fit with a little bit of pushing, but um, it is a tight fit, um, which is to be noted. Um, heavy sixers, I've owned two heavy sixers. Those are a little bit snug, but not nearly as bad as the light sixers. Um, and it only seems to be an issue with the earlier six switch consoles. Four switch consoles and uh, juniors uh, tend to uh, be problem free. Um, the most likely cause of this is these cartridges were made to a different specification for the simple fact they were um, not no longer making the older Atari models when these cartridges were made. Um, these were both made in 1988 when the only console Atari was making, um, as far as the 2600 goes, is the Junior. And um, these were pretty well made to fit in the Junior. They might have test fit them in a couple older consoles, but these were both basically made for the Atari 2600 Junior. And uh, that seems to be uh, my reasoning behind it. I'm not sure if there is any other reasoning, but that's my reasoning. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, I'll have my Atari 2600 console review up as soon as I can. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys later.